And if I'm sharing something that's going over your head, you don't understand, you want to understand, feel free to ask, okay? So we're gonna have a conversation, we're gonna have a dialogue today. Hmm. Praise God. You don't have to stand, I'm gonna read a passage of scripture. I want to jump right into this because I want to redeem the time. And I hope to finish uh, within 40 minutes. Although the session could be an entire, the message could be an entire uh, 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 conference and, 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 uh, and series. Today's message, I'm entitling it Trick, Not Treat. Trick, Not Treat. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, one of my favorite words in the Bible, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Think on these things. Father, speak to us. Address our minds and our hearts. Speak to us as only you can. We need to hear from you. We need to understand, O oh God, so that we be of greater service to your kingdom, of greater use to your kingdom. In Jesus' name, speak to us. Halloween. Does anybody know where Halloween came from? All Hallows' Eve. All Hallows' Eve, it's called. Right? But that was a name given to it by the Catholic Church. Matter of fact, Halloween goes back more than... 2,000 years ago. And if Jesus was on earth 2,000 years ago, let's add another 500 years. Halloween goes way back. And it goes back to a time and to a people known as the Celts. Anybody familiar with the Celts? The Celts were a people from Northern Ireland. Yep, the Celtic. England, those regions. And they, they, they worshipped the earth. They were animists. They were like, you guys, you guys remember watching, what was that movie with the blue people? Smurfs? No, no, that's cute, thank you, it's a cartoon. <laughs> Avatar, yes, Avatar. Praise God, I, I love, I love these young and, 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 and innocent answers of, Oh man, Smurfs. Um, okay, uh, Avatar. You guys are familiar with Avatar? Remember Avatar, the blue people? Yep. And what was their thing? What were, what were they doing? Did, well, let me, let me backtrack. Do you know that Avatar was a religious movie? No. Avatar was teaching you about animism. It was preaching animism. The avat not the avatars, but the, well, I don't know what they were called, if you remember, tell me. The blue people? The avatar. Hmm? The what? The other people. Yeah, okay, the giants, the giant people. I don't know if they, they were the avatars or what. I don't understand the name of it anyway. But the point is, they worshipped, they worshipped, remember the tree? They worshipped the tree. And the tree was the source of their life. And they believed in uh, uh, the tree was the source. You lived, you got your life force from the tree. And that's what, that's what they were living off of and for. If they, if they killed an animal, right? The animal had a spirit and, and you respected the spirit and the animal and you didn't just kill it and throw it away. It went back to the earth and the tree took its energy and it came back to you, right? All of this stuff, this is a religion. It's called animism. Back in the days, it was called, 
it, it was a part of a cult mentality called hedonism, right? Which is all about pleasure. Yep. All about pleasure. So, Let me keep going. Hedonism. There is a man, or was a man, he died already. His name was Anton LaVey. <laughs> Anybody ever heard of him? Anton LaVey was a man who founded a church, and the church's mission was to worship Satan. He founded this church in the 1960s in California, and a lot of Hollywood actors and movie stars became members of his church. One of them, for you older folk my age, was a woman by the name of Jane Mansfield. She was a priestess in the Church of Satan, among a bunch of other actors of that time. Anyway, Anton LaVey wrote a Bible, and the, the model or the pledge of the Bible of Satan is this. Do as thou wilt. Do as thou wilt. Do, in other words, do whatever you want. Because you answer to nobody and nothing. There is no God. You answer to yourself. Do as you will. Anton LaVey made this statement. I am glad that Christians, Christian parents, let their children worship the devil at least one night of the year. Welcome to Halloween. This is the founder of the Church of Satan. This is his mindset. Now, before you get into an uproar, before you start getting anxious, before you start, oh my God, pastor's gonna tell us we can't do anything on Halloween. Relax, drop your guard. Listen to what the Lord wants us to understand about this thing called Halloween that the world is involved in, okay? Und I, 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 I want you to understand where this comes from, the spirit by which it comes. And I want you to also understand that there is no day that belongs to the devil. There is no thing that belongs to the devil. All things belong to God. Amen. Matter of fact, the scripture even tells us all souls belong to me. I am the judge. I will judge. In He writes in the Satanic Bible, there are two main Satanic holidays. One is Val, Valpurgisnacht, which is the night of Valspurgis, who was a priest. And the second most important holiday to Satanism is Halloween. Now, I know that most people don't go around worshiping the devil during Halloween. I know most people consider it as a holiday, and matter of fact, it's changed when it came to America. In the 1950s, it was about pranks. You know, kids throwing toilet paper and built on houses, uh, doing all kinds of pranks to their neighbors and things like that. And, 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 and because of that, there were a lot of arrests. Teenagers were being arrested and all kinds of stuff going on. And the society decided, through the police departments, through the school systems, to change it up and make it more of a kid-friendly day. You know, go out, get candy, apple bobbing, and make it a pleasant thing, not necessarily something evil or terrible or bad. I don't want to tell you that everybody that goes around with costumes and makeup is worshiping the devil, because they're not. But I want you to understand where this stems from. Again, the spirit by which it comes, and what is really behind it in the hearts and the minds of the people that take this seriously. As I mentioned earlier today, we need to take God seriously. Yeah. Right? Amen. 
God is not a joke. He's not a clown. He's not someone to be trifled with. God is serious. By the same token, Satan is serious. And he's real. And he's a real person. But he's only one person. And he's a creature. He's not God. And he needs help to do his job. The devil can't be at the same at the same place, or rather, in more than one place at a time. He can't uh, see everything going on. He doesn't have that privilege. He's got to be present, or he's got to get a message from somebody. He has to be there, and if he's there, he can't be here. If he's here, he can't be there. So he's a limited creature with limited power, limited ability, limited knowledge, limited understanding. But he's real. Contrary to what the world wants us to believe. Rather, contrary to what he wants us to believe. Because if you believe he's not real, then you don't take him seriously. And then he moves about and you just say, oh, that's just, you know, karma. You know, the world likes to use that term. And I hear so many Christians use that term. Karma. Karma is not scripture. Karma is not of God. All right? He writes in the Bible that there are these two holidays. He died, Anton LaVey. He married a woman by the name of Blanche Barton. She is now the high priestess of the Church of Satan. And if you don't believe me, you can go on the website, look up the Church of Satan, and you'll see a whole web page. And you'll see all the stuff that she says. It's real. It's not a joke. This is what she says. Halloween is traditionally a time when the obscure portal into the realms of darkness, death, and the supernatural is thrown open. Demons and spirits have free reign for one night. Cavorting, enticing us into their revels and revealing glimpses into the future. As a child drawn to darker passions from birth, I'm always delighted in the fear and fantasies of Halloween from the time she was a little girl. This is why I'm praying to God that our church would understand the importance of the ch children's ministry. Getting the gospel of Jesus Christ to our little children because that's where it begins. That's where it begins. That's Anton LaVey on the right, that's her on the left. There he is right there. Real people. I'm not making this stuff up. Real people. She says, they have a chance to dance with the devil. Either stumbling, tittering, and nervous in the arms of, a, of the black prince. Or boldly, ravenously sharing in the sensual ex excesses and fright of others on this magical unholy night. Now birth and death have for me become inextricably interwoven into this day. Now I know everybody doesn't think that way. And everybody doesn't hold these, this, this, this philosophy. But this is where it comes from. This is the root of it. As devil worshippers, she says, Halloween was very special to us. And we looked forward to celebrating it because we knew the implications and the dark power behind the night. It is very different from every other night in the witchcraft world. It would be like me saying to believers today, how important to you are Good Friday and Resurrection Sunday? This are, these are the words spoken by an ex-Satanist who came to Christ. His name is John Ramirez. If you haven't heard of his name, look him up. John Ramirez. And maybe one day we'll have him here. I met him years ago when he first came to Christ. And his testimony is powerful. When we pray over our village, understand that when he was a Satanist, he 
prayed to the demon that controlled him and led him over the areas that he was watching over. So it's not something that we do because we, we just think about it. We realize and understand the reality of the spirit world. Now, I'm not telling you this so I can scare you, okay? Do not be afraid. Do not be anxious. Because remember, greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. All right? Jesus Christ is Lord. Satan, Lucifer, demons, principalities, powers, rulers that we wrestle up against, they're not Lord. Only Jesus Christ is Lord. And he rules and he controls our lives. He leads our lives. Amen? Amen. So if you are in Christ, there's nothing, that's Don Ramirez, there's nothing the devil can do to you. Matter of fact, let me explain something to you. Before the devil can do anything to you or affect your life or your family or your children or your schooling or anything of your life, before he can do anything, he's got to go to our Heavenly Father and ask for permission first. You understand that? He's got to ask for permission first. And if he gets the permission from God, that means God has a plan. There's something God wants to do in our life. And maybe he wants to take something out. Maybe he wants to add something. But you know what? Only when you go through fire do you come out shining like gold. So God has a purpose even in Satan's scheming and planning because God is in control. So remember and never ever give the devil more power or authority than he really has. When people get possessed by demons, and they do, when people get possessed by demons, it's because they allowed it. They allowed that spirit into their life. But demonic possession doesn't happen overnight. It's a process. Okay? It's a process. When we allow the enemy into our lives, and we allow him into our lives by many different things that we do. All right? We allow things in our homes. We allow things in our speech patterns. We allow things in the choices we make that give gateways, opportunities for the enemy to get, in, get involved in our lives. He says, finally, I remember the days leading up to Halloween. We devil worshippers had our instructions from the demon world about what, we had, what had to be done. And we knew it was going to be a long night. I would sleep all day to be rested up and ready for midnight so I can unleash hell on the world into the wee hours of the morning. John Ramirez, his own words. Do you know that Halloween is the second most grossing Halloween holiday in America today? Halloween actually brings in over $5 billion a year. $5 billion are spent in America because of Halloween. The only, the only holiday that's bigger than that is Christmas. Can you imagine? People spent $5 billion on Halloween. You ever bought a Halloween costume? Pretty expensive, right? They could get real expensive. When we did one of our Christmas plays, I went to a, 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 a costume store in Manhattan. And I was amazed because they had everything. I mean, everything you could imagine. And I'm looking at these prices, $450, $500 wings, <laughs> uh, you know, $200 cloaks, incredible stuff. But they had everything. You can spend a pretty penny if you want to dress up. Parties, right? And all the stuff you got to buy for the party. Look! Look at the look at look at what happened. Look how Halloween affects our church. Marisol can't be here for the entire month of Halloween. Why? Of the whole month of October. Why? Because everything is prepping for Halloween. Halloween, I mentioned, was originally created by a group of people called Celtics. And they, they, they celebrated this festival called Sowing. It doesn't, it's not spelled how it sounds, but it's called Sowing. Sowing 
Mark the day, the end of the summer, and the harvest, and the beginning of the dark, cold winter. Next week, what happens next week? Thank you. Somebody's relevant. Somebody's awake. <laughs> next week, we change the clock. So, fall back, right? It's 12.30. Next Sunday, at this time, it's going to be 11.30. So, you remember? Put your clock back. If you don't, you'll be at church an hour early. Maybe I shouldn't have said nothing. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have said anything. All right. This is the time that they celebrate sowing. And during sowing, what they believed was that to, there were spirits that would come out this day and would affect their crops. So they would present to the spirits crops, corn, apples, all of the things that you can think about as far as foods were presented to the gods, as they call them, or evil spirits during the time of sowing. The priests were called druids. You guys heard of druids? You'll hear about druids in any horror movie that you watch, about witchcraft. Vampires, you heard of vampires? All that stuff came out during the time of Solomon. Are vampires real? Yes. yes, they are. Not the way Hollywood puts them, but they're people who are Satanists. They drink blood. Yes. They sleep all day. They come out at night. They, 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 they file their teeth to look like fangs. I'm not making this up. Look it up. We're in a wide world web. You can find out anything you want. This is real stuff. Why? Because as the Satanists say, they would rather rule in hell than serve in heaven. They actually believe that Satan is going to give them authority in hell. They actually believe that Satan has authority in hell. But they don't know that this devil don't want to go to hell. And when he goes to hell, God's going to send him there. Not because he wants to, but because he's being punished. The lies and deceptions. So sowing was a festival celebrated by the uh, Celts. When Christianity came to this region, the Pope... Pope Gregory III decided to get to the Christians to, to convert the people. We're going to take sowing and we're going to mix it with Christianity. And instead of eliminating it, doing away with it, now it's not evil spirits. Because in sowing you pray for your family members, those who died. Sounds like what Catholicism teaches, purgatory, right? You pray for the dead. You don't pray for the dead. The scripture does not teach us that. You, 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 sowing allowed you, caused you to bring food to the evil spirit so that you would not lose your harvest. What we do right now, what we do in this day and age is we, have the kids go and they get a collect candy and good stuff. But, the, but for the kids to get candy, they had to put on a mask, right? What's the purpose of the mask? Somebody help me. Why, why do people dress up like ghosts and goblins and all these things? To fool evil spirits to thinking that they're one of them. The costumes aren't angels. The costumes aren't, you know, John the Baptist or... Or, or, or Jesus even, or whatever, right? It's not, not biblical. It's demons. And the uglier the costume, the better. The more evil looking the costume, the better. Why? Because the intent was, you put on a, a mask to fool the spirits that come out during sowing, during Halloween night. Fool the spirits that they would think that you're one of them, and they'll leave you alone. This is more than 2,000 years ago and continued down throughout the ages 
and he reaches America, and here we are still doing the same thing. Now, that's not a problem so much for secular America. I'm believers to do this and hold on to it, keep doing it. But it's gotten into the church. Now, okay, here we go now. Here we go now. I just finished reading Philippians, where the scripture tells us whatever's lovely, whatever's pure. Anything lovely about Halloween? Not even close. Anything lovely, anything, anything pure about Halloween? Anything praiseworthy about Halloween? Anything that would glorify Jesus? Anything that would, would wow, the Lord is good. You ever, do you have good feelings Halloween night? You can't wait for the neighbors to come by the house? And, and, and you're going to give them a Bible track and they're going to thank you and grateful that the Lord is speaking to their lives. Anybody comes to your house during Halloween and wants to hear a word from God? If you give them a Bible track, they'll look at you like, what are you going to do with this? If you have no candy, what happens? They'll curse you out. They'll... One time people wrote on my, on my door, on, on, the, on the steps of my house. Some vulgarity, you know, because we didn't bring candy. Matter of fact, in Sony Point, where I live, people come from all over. And they park their cars, and, and we see a stream of people, just like what's happening in Mexico with Honduras. A stream of people coming down the block. It's amazing. I never saw such a thing. I mean, I've seen a lot of people walking, like, in the Bronx, and, but nothing like this. It, it amazes me. Good thing is that we have curfews around here, right? 8 o'clock, everybody be in your house. <laughs> all of the things that we see, the jack-o'-lantern, right? all of this has connotations of the spirit world. So, what am I saying to you here? Because I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to turn this into a seminar. I just, again, I want you to understand the realities, and maybe you know some of this stuff, but maybe you need to be reminded of the reality. The reality is there's nothing godly about Halloween. There's nothing that would lift up the name of Jesus regarding Halloween. Matter of fact, it is paganistic. When you take the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ and you mix it with something that's not godly, mm -hmm. it's a lie of the devil. Mm -hmm. There's a thing called falsehood. right? The truth and the lie mixed, that's called falsehood. It sounds like truth, but it's a lie. It has a little bit of truth to it, but the end is destruction. The end is deception. If, if the world would believe that Jesus Christ is at the same level playing field as Satan, as Lucifer, the devil's done his job. And so we have the yin yang, right? You guys heard of the yin yang? You need good in order to have bad, you need good mm -hmm. in order to have good. You heard the yin yang? One side is black, one side is white. And they're both equal forces. They're both equal forces. And sometimes good, with white good, which is good, right? Why is bad always black? Sometimes good wins, sometimes evil wins, right? But they're equal in power. They're equal in power and they need each other. This is called dualism. Mm. You, ever hear, you ever hear the term? That's what they're talking about. Dualism. The devil's a liar. And his mission is to deceive, to destroy, to steal, Jesus said. So listen. There you go. I didn't make it up. How about that? Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. See, this is a scheme. He's not coming full force, telling you to reject God. He says, just dabble in this a little bit and you'll be all right. Dabble in it. But remember what I said before, when you dabble, you open the door. You guys heard of the Ouija board? Yeah. Have I? Yeah. Do you know the Ouija board? 
was created by one of Anton LaVey's students. It's a game, right? It's just a game. But it's, it opens the door. It opens the door. When people don't take the devil seriously, he enters their lives without them even realizing it's him. So, the schemes of the devil. For so he wrestles not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever things are honest, I just read it to you. Now, let me finish. God is calling us to be a unique people. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11 says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. <coughs> expose them. When you come into the land, God told Israel in Deuteronomy, the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not learn to follow the abomination of those nations. There shall not be found among you one who practices witchcraft or a soothsayer, you know those people who like to tell you the future? Yeah. Or one who interprets omens or a sorcerer or one who conjures spells or a medium or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord. Have no fellowship with them. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? 2 Corinthians chapter 6. What agreement has a temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of God. As God said, I will make my dwelling among them and walk among them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, go out from their midst and be separate from them, says the Lord, and touch no unclean thing. Then I will come, I will welcome you. And I will be a father to you, and yet shall be my sons and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. So, this is what I want to tell you. We're celebrating harvest, right? We're not celebrating Halloween. People are going to be walking down the street, all dressed up in every which way. And I pray that nobody in this church walks around looking like a demon. Putting on these, 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 because all you're doing is falling right into the trap of the devil. What you're saying is, I agree with this. Okay? You want to put angelic wings? Be my guest. You want to dress up like John the Baptist? Be my guest. But we're going to be outside. It's going to be outside, right? Free? Yeah. Okay. So if it's cool, put on a jacket. I'm going to be out there. And, and people are going to be walking by, and kids are going to be walking by, and they're waiting for candy because that's what they will learn. And as we give them candy, we're going to talk to them about Jesus. As they take a candy bar, God bless you. We're here. We're a church. We love the Lord. Come join us. Come visit us. You want to be prayed for? You want to know about the real Lord? Because Jesus says we're in the world, not but not of it. We don't follow the patterns of this world. I know it's not something that you hear too often in church. I know that... What's the big deal? It's just candy. It's just kids. It's not the, nobody's worshiping. You're right, nobody's worshiping the devil. But I want this church, as I am charged, as the under shepherd of this house, to understand, not to be ignorant, not to be, not to be blindsided by the realities that, that exist. This stuff comes 
from a dark place. It doesn't come from God. And unfortunately, when the church had the opportunity to counter it with the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ, it accepted it and assimilated it. So instead of praying to the gods, now you pray to the Roman gods. Jupiter. Yes, ma'am. Just that, that part of you talking about it, could you say that again? What you were talking about just now about the church accepting it? What Instead of the church, when, when Pope Gregory had the opportunity in the year, I think it was 649, when he had the opportunity, when, when Christianity got to the region of the Celtics, instead of teaching the truth of the gospel, that this is ungodly and so forth and so on, this is satanic worship, the church accepted it and just changed the names. Changed the names. So it was once Solomon, changed it to Halloween. The day when we, were, we, we recognized the dead saints. Absolutely. And it's been carried on. Halloween. All Hallows Day. The day when we recognize the deaths of Peter and John and the apostles and the great saints that once lived. Listen. We recognize that Peter was a man of God. But we don't pray to Peter. We don't have a statue of Peter and Saint, and he's the one that's going to get me into heaven. There's only one person who's getting me to heaven. His name is Jesus. Amen. Peter don't have keys. The keys that Jesus gave Peter was, was the keys that he had, that he opened the, key, the doors of heaven by preaching the gospel on the day of Pentecost. That was it. He lost the keys after that. Jesus Christ is the door. He's the one who stands and knocks. He's the one who lets us in. Nobody else. It's not Peter. It's not John. The power that Satan has. The Bible says that, that when, when the rapture takes place and God gives Satan authority for seven years after the rapture, that after those seven years, God's going to send an angel. It doesn't even mention him by name. It's not Michael. It's not Gabriel. An angel. Just a regular angel. God's going to send that angel and go find Lucifer and tie him up and drop him into a bottomless pit for a thousand years. That guy I want to worship? Are you kidding me? He's nothing. But men have made him greater than he really is. Romans, God tells us in his word through the apostle Paul, because they would rather believe the lie, God sent them a deceiving spirit that they would believe the lie. Because they would rather worship the creature than the creator, God sent them a deceiving spirit that they would believe the lie. Men would rather worship a creature than the God of the universe. Because you see, you can see that creature. You can carve it, make it a statue, you know exactly what it looks like. Nobody can carve God. Anybody see the picture of Jesus? The Jesus of the Bible. Nobody knows what Jesus looks like. But yet we have pictures of him. See, even then. The only reason I like this picture and I have it up is be it's not because I want to see what Jesus looks like because he looks nothing like that. The only reason I have this up is because this is what Jesus did. He stood on a mountain looking over Jerusalem before he was crucified. That's the only reason why I have that up. Not because I want you to believe that's what Jesus looks like. Somebody said one time, Jesus, everybody knows Jesus is right. You know, you go to a black church, Jesus is black. You go to an, a Greek church, Jesus is Greek. You know, he's got that Greek nose, that square nose. The reality is, who cares what Jesus looks like? Who cares if he's black or white or orange or purple? Who cares? What matters is that Jesus is real. What matters is he came like he said he would. What matters is he did what he said he would do. What matters is that he fulfilled the word of God. What matters is that when he said it is finished, it was done. What matters is that he died, he resurrected, and he sits at the right hand of God the Father, interceding for you and for me, regardless of our color, regardless of our complexion, regardless of what language we speak, regardless of whether our hair is coarse 
or light or whatever, whether we got blue eyes or brown eyes. Whether I'm so black, I'm blue, or I'm so white, you can't see me. It doesn't matter. What matters is that Jesus Christ is Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And there is no other Lord. Lucifer has no authority that Jesus doesn't give him. Matter of fact, listen to me. This woman, Anton LaVey's wife, I've, at, at the bottom of her picture, she has these words. And I want you to hear this. I'm going to tell you what the words are after I tell you this. When Jesus crossed over the sea of Galilee, he met at a town called Gadara, a demon-possessed young man. And the father comes running to him. Lord, help me. Help my son. The kid was possessed by a demon. He was telling his father, he was telling Jesus, the father was telling Jesus. He goes they, and the men get grab him, they tie him up, and he breaks the ropes. And they put chains on him and he breaks the chains. And he goes around terrorizing the village. Please help my son. When Jesus came to that man, as Jesus is approaching him, the demons in him recognize who's coming to, coming their way. They recognize who's coming their way because they know who's Lord. They know who's in control. And, they, and as Jesus is approaching them, they start crying out, Jesus, what are you, do what are you doing coming to bother us? And they're wreaking havoc all over the village and they're asking Jesus, why are you coming to bother us? And listen to what Jesus says. Jesus tells them, shut up. And they shut up. That's right. <laughs> That's a bad word for Ruby. <laughs> Good, you keep believing that. Jesus tells them to shut up. And then Jesus asks them this question. What is your name? Because demons have a name. Mm. And they answer him. They say, we are legion. For we are many. A legion is a term for an army of Roman soldiers. 2,000 soldiers. There's 2,000 demons in that man. This woman in the Church of Satan, she has on the bottom of her page, we are legion. Devil's real. And he will use every given opportunity to deceive to lie, to steal, to corrupt. He did it with two-thirds of the angels of heaven. Angels who experienced the awesomeness of God. He was able to deceive them. And they followed him. If he can, if he can deceive angels, what makes you think he can't deceive men? There are people that would rather believe any other book, any other book full of lies and garbage than the Word of God. Amen. They will pick up books and say, look, see, the Bible's not true. And they complain that this is written by men. Who do you think wrote those books? <laughs> right? Because the Bible was written by men, we can't trust it. But you trust this garbage. You trust this. When I was growing up in the Lord, I was a teenager, and I got involved in occultic practices. A Christian. Why? Because I believed that the people that were teaching me the Bible didn't know everything. And I came across somebody who says, hey, I got some new knowledge. And I know that was pride that drew me to it. Arrogance drew me to it. The Lord delivered me from it, praise God. Right? But when I was involved in those practices, I was given a book, many books actually. One of them was called The Aquarian Gospel of Jesus Christ. I burned those books. I got them out of my house. Right? I was a teenager. My dad didn't know what I was into because you know teenagers don't want to be street secretive. I had a box of books under my bed. All because I wanted more knowledge than what the Word of God had. I want to tell you, this is the full revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. There is nothing missing. There is nothing to be added. When Jesus said it is finished, he meant it. The revelation from God is Jesus Christ. 
And there is no other revelation given to men. There is no other truth given to men. Everything we need to know about God is in this book, his word. This is his word. That's why it's called his word. There's no other book. Yeah, that's the group I was involved in, the Rosicrucians. And they, 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 they revel in the fact that they are of higher insight than the Masons, whom you guys are sure are familiar with or heard of. To them, the Masons are kindergarten. The word of God, the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ, this is what God makes available to us. Amen. This is what we hold on to. This is what we believe. This is what we trust. The only rule for our faith, what we believe, and our conduct, what we do. You want to know if what you're doing is right? Open your Bible. You want to know if something you believe is right? Open your Bible. You want to know if something that somebody's saying that wants you to believe it is true or not? Open your Bible. The Word of God will tell you. The awesomeness of God includes in His Word every one of our experiences. How do you treat your children? It's in here. How do you treat your husband? It's in here. How do you look for a husband? It's in here. How do you find a good woman of God? It's in here. How do you look for a job? It's in here. How do you do your job? How do you do your job? It's in here. How do you worship? It's in here. Look it up. It's in God's word. What does God, what is, what, how, what does God say about sex? It's in here. Amen. Everything you want to know about the human experience, it's in God's word. You can find it. It's there. It's available for you if you want it. But not everybody wants to hear what God has to say. They want to hear what Oprah has to say. They want to hear what Ellen DeGeneres has to say. So we go and watch all of these television programs, all of these talk shows. We open up our cell phones and we go to Facebook. Let's see what people are saying. Okay. What do you say about politics? Oh, okay. Oh. Well, I agree with that. Yeah, that makes sense. And all of a sudden, we start creating our own assimilating all this information, becoming part of our thought patterns, and before you know it, we're believing what men are saying and not what God says. Church, relevance is important if we're going to use this world. we got to know what this stuff is, where it comes from, or else we'll just go with the tide. We'll just follow the tide, and we'll be just like the world. And when the world looks at us and says, oh, you just like us, what we need you for? What good are you? If, if you're going through the same problems I'm going through, and you're, the, you're handling it the same way I'm handling it, what do I need your God for? What do I need to know you? What, what do I care what you believe? Because you're handling it the same way I am. Versus somebody going through a situation that you yourself went through or are going through as well, and they see the peace of God in your life. They see the joy of the Holy Spirit in your life. That even though you're going through that circumstance and that situation, you can smile, you can sing, you can give words of encouragement. Why? Because the Holy Spirit indwells you. And that is visible. Now I'm done. Praise God. God is calling us to have no association with darkness. But to rather, with the light of Christ, expose this darkness. How do we expose this darkness? As I said just now, we're going to be out there. October 31st. And let the darkness come. We're going to put the light on. Amen. Let the darkness come. We're going to put the light on. We're going to put the light of Jesus Christ on. And expose this nonsense that has gotten people so wrapped up and, 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 and riled up that they believe that they're okay with God. That they don't need Jesus. But we know better. What was the song that you teen girls sang one time? The world needs you. Franklin 
the song? Remember that song you guys sang? My world needs you. How's it go, Stephanie? You just, you just uh, hummed a, a, a verse. That's the one. You remember that? There you go. Our world needs Jesus. And you know what? You're the only Jesus the world will see right now. Will you be a Jesus in your circle of influence? Will you be light in the midst of darkness? Will you express the awesomeness and the beauty of our Lord Jesus Christ to this world that is confused, afraid, anxious, terrified? Will you be light in darkness? I challenge you. Would you bow your head where you are? You know, the devil tries to usurp not just these days, but he's tried to usurp Easter or the Resurrection Day. So we call it Easter now, right? That's the song. He tries to usurp the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And all of a sudden, somehow, someway, a rabbit came into the scene. What's a rabbit got to do with the resurrection of Jesus? What do eggs have to do with the resurrection of Jesus? All this paganism, why? Just to cancel out the work of the cross. Cancel out what Christ has done on our behalf. Church, let's never, never forget. Never allow the enemy to eclipse the awesomeness of this salvation that God has provided us. So I'm going to pray. I know I shared a lot of information. And maybe you got some of it. Maybe some of it went over your head. It's okay. It got into your ears. And in your quiet moments, the Holy Spirit will remind you. And the Holy Spirit will speak to you. And the Holy Spirit will clarify. But you've got to listen to his voice. Because God has called us into a great work. To cancel out the works of the devil. I want to pray. Father, 